see what's happening now. Okay, welcome everybody. My name is uh, Tony Gee Parker, also known as Tony the Tapper, and I want to welcome you all to tonight's uh, EFT and Law of Attraction uh, workshop for manifesting happiness, abundance, business, and personal success. And I see uh, we have uh, Sarah here, which is nice. Hi, Sarah. Welcome. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do our warm-up series of EFT taps, okay, uh, to help manifest abundance and uh, prosperity. Welcome, Raphael. How you doing? Awesome. Well, we got some more people showing up, so this is very cool. Okay, great. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to start doing the uh, uh, protective shield of golden light. Okay, uh, and the way that works is uh, uh, we're going to be doing EFT taps on different uh, EFT tapping points while uh, I think somebody's got a little bit of feedback, and I think, let's just see if that's, there we go. If there's feedback, you need to, you might, oh, no feedback, okay, we're good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do the Protective Shield of Golden Light, which is based on a 5,000-year-old Tibetan mantra. Uh, and it's all about uh, protecting yourself from any kind of toxic energy, negative energy, negative entities, negative spirits. Uh, also, if you're in a toxic work environment or a difficult work environment or have a difficult client, this is a great exercise uh, for providing you with a certain amount of protection. In my own personal experience, it lasts from four to six hours. So I often uh, recommend to my clients, tap in the morning before going into work, and then tap at the lunchtime break to take you through the afternoon. And again, it's very simple. We'll just do uh, start tapping the top of the head. And again, uh, seven to ten times on each tapping point. And it's Simon Says. Okay, just repeat after me. Energy system. Energy system. Eyebrow. I'm instructing you. I'm instructing you. Side of the eye to generate. To generate. A protective shield of golden light. A protective shield of golden light. Okay, under the eye, all around my body. All around, all around my body. Under the nose, protecting me from all negative energies. Protecting me from all negative energy. Under the mouth, all negative influences. All negative, all negative influences. Collarbone, all negative intentions. All negative intentions. Under the arm, all negative entities. All negative entities. Karate chop, sending them all to the sun. Sending them all to the sun. To be transmuted to love. To be transmuted to love. Very good. Let's go top of the head. Only allowing in. Only allowing in. Eyebrow loving. Loving. Side of the eye healing. Healing. Under the eye positive. Positive. Under the nose energies. Energy. On the mouth and intentions. And intentions. Collarbone. And if I have any negative energies or intentions. And if I have any negative energies or intentions. Under the arm. I send them all to the sun. I send them all to the sun. Karate chop to be transmuted to love. To be transmuted to love. Beautiful. Let's all take a deep breath. And I'll release. Okay, very good. Excellent. And now what we're going to do is uh, another uh, EFT uh, tap. It's based on a traditional Hawaiian mantra, which is Ho'oponopono. There's a lot of discussion about it on the Internet. It's uh, very powerful. It's great for healing and releasing. And, again, it's great for problematic relationships. So if you have a, uh, a difficult relationship with a client or a customer or an employer or a boss, again, this is a perfect uh, uh, EFT tap to practice to heal a relationship. Okay, top of the head, and just repeat after me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Eyebrow, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Side of the eye, I forgive you. I forgive you. Under the eye, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Under the nose, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Under the mouth, I love you. I love you. Collarbone, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Under the arm, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Karate chop, I forgive you. I forgive you. Top of the head, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Eyebrow, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Side of the eye, I love you. I love you. Under the eye, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Under the nose, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Under the mouth, I forgive you. I forgive you. Collarbone, I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Under the arm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Karate chop, I love you. I love you. Excellent. Let's all take a deep breath and I'll release. Okay, very cool. Excellent. And now we're going to move along to the gratitude tap, what I call the cash and prizes version of the gratitude tap. And if you've ever been on one of those uh, gazillion uh, three $3,000 uh, weekend uh, uh, seminars, uh, law of attraction and success seminars at the Marriott in Las Vegas, uh, they, they suggest that you do this. Uh, I... I'm uh, going to save you $3,000 on a weekend in Las Vegas, uh, and I'll tell you, it's very simple. What you do is you make a list of your clients or customers or anybody who's been a source of income. This could be government agency, a corporation. If you have a practice or a business, you would then list your clients or your customers. If you're some kind of an entertainer or a performer, then I would say list your past gigs or performances or shows if you're an artist I would list my collectors list your collectors or anybody who's bought your work or posted your work or what have you uh, if you're just if you're looking for work list your past employers uh, and again just in a general sense just make a list of anybody who's ever given you or paid you money okay so uh, Who would like to check in? The way we work together as a group is each one of us checks in uh, with a uh, name or a first name or an initial of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Source of income, and then we tap on it together. Who would like to check in, please? Go ahead. I'll go with RG. Okay, very good. Excellent. Top of the head. And now we say those two magic words that some people can never say. Thank you. Thank you. Eyebrow, thank you. Thank you. Side of the eye, thank you. Thank you. Under the eye, thank you. Thank you. Under the nose, thank you. Thank you. Under the mouth, thank you. Thank you. Collarbone, thank you. Thank you. Under the arm, thank you. Thank you. Karate chop, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Let's all take a deep breath. And I'll release. Very good. Okay. Anybody else want to check in and share a source of abundance? Go ahead, please. Ray. Hi there. Excellent. Okay. Let's start tapping atop that. Hi there, Billy. Top of the head. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eyebrow. Thank you. Thank you. Side of the eye. Thank you. Thank you. Under the eye. Thank you. Thank you. Under the nose. Thank you. Thank you. Under the mouth, thank you. Thank you. Collarbone, thank you. Thank you. Under the arm, thank you. Thank you. Karate chop, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. So I'll take a deep breath and I'll release. Okay. Anybody else want to check in and share a source of a button? You can use initial, first name, whatever you want to do. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go top of the head. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eyebrow, thank you. Thank you. Side of the eye, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Under the eye, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Under the nose, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Under the mouth, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Collarbone, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Under the arm, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Karate chop, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Let's all take a deep breath. And I'll release. Very cool. Okay, I just want to show you something that I practice what I preach. This is my little $2 spiral notebook. I've had it so long that the cover is worn off. It is completely full of customers. When I first started doing this exercise, okay, uh, there were I only had three clients. Okay, now... Uh, 200 page book is almost completely full. Now what I do is I don't tap on all of them. Okay, uh, there's a little bit of, 
Uh, I don't tap on all of them. What I do is I take the last, my last most favorite best 20 clients, and I tap on them every morning. So let's start with, I don't know, uh, let's do uh, GG. Okay, that's a good one. Top of the head. All right, and please all join me. Thank you. Thank you. Eyebrow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Side of the eye, thank you. Thank you. Under the eye, thank you. Thank you. Under the nose, thank you. Thank you. Under the mouth, thank you. Thank you. Collarbone, thank you. Thank you. Under the arm, thank you. Thank you. Karate chop, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Let's all take a deep breath and I'll release. Okay. By the way, guys, I am uh, working very hard on creating a manual or a workbook for everybody. Uh, but until then, I'll just keep repeating the same instructions over and over again. Uh, I'd say the most important thing you could get initially is get yourself a $2 spiral notebook, okay? Um, and that's going to be your abundance book or EFT workbook, whatever you want to call it, okay? And uh, that's where you're going to start writing things down and making different kinds of lists. And, of course, the first list that I always recommend is a gratitude list. And more specifically, since we're talking about abundance and money and clients and business, is start writing down your customers or your clients or your sources of income, okay? Uh, and that's, uh, again, like I said, that's uh, that becomes the basis of your gratitude tap. I tap on 20 clients every morning. Uh, you want to tap on 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever number floats your boat. All I can tell you is it really works, okay? All right, so now we're moving along to the uh, money thermostat. And again, this is a uh, classic law of attraction exercise. And it, it, again, it really works. And what we're doing, you see, what the nature of what we're doing is we're reprogramming ourselves to uh, accept and manifest abundance, okay? And what seems to happen to us, and this is... Uh, due to either our upbringing, our religion, our education, our family of origin, we've been receiving input, okay, uh, you know, often without our knowledge or permission, but we've been receiving input about what an acceptable level of abundance is okay. What's our default set point for an acceptable level of abundance? Just like we have a set point for our body weight, we also have a set point for our level of abundance. Now, that's okay if we're meeting our needs, paying our bills, taking care of business, and we're able to, you know, uh, have a, you know, a happy life, a complete life. That's not a bad thing. On the other hand, if we're under-earning, if we're not making enough money, uh, we're not paying our bills, not able to take care of our family or our children or ourselves, you know, etc., if there's financial pressure, then it's time to winch up the thermostat, okay? Now, the basic way this works, okay, and again, I'm just going to give you a for instance, is pick a pay period. <coughs> Excuse me. Pick a pay period that makes sense to you, all right? Now, that could be a week. Some people work on a daily pay period, like taxi drivers and food service people, you know, waiters and waitresses and bartenders. They work on a daily pay period. Uh, maybe you work on a weekly pay period. Maybe you work on a bi-weekly pay period. Maybe you work monthly. Some people even work quarterly or annually. Depends on the nature of your practice or business or the way you organize your finances. But what you want to do is keep records so you are aware of what your income is, okay? And then what you do is, again, the, the, the again, the basically rub your sore spot or tap on your karate chop and you'd say for instance even though I made 500 bucks last week I choose to make a thousand bucks this week and I deeply completely love and accept myself so what you do is you take the real number of what you earned the last pay period and then you double it setting an intention to make twice that amount this pay period okay and that's basically your EFT script now since we're working in a group, okay, and the, I'm sure all of you have slightly different financial kind of structures and arrangements and levels of income, and maybe even different pay periods, we're just going to accept. We're just going to use uh, what I call the vague form of the uh, money thermostat, okay? And uh, you guys just follow after me. It works perfectly well. It's great, but it's better for groups than a one-on-one. -on -one. It uh, doing the thermostat on your own or with a coach. Uh, 
definitely use your real numbers, okay? That's definitely, it definitely gives it more power and more effectiveness. Okay, so rubbing your sore spot or tapping on your karate chop, okay? Just repeat after me, Simon says, even though I made what I made last week. Even though I made what I made last week. I choose to make twice what I made last week this week. I choose to make twice what I made last week this week. And I deeply and completely. And I deeply and completely. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Excellent. Very good. So even though I made what I made last week. So even though I made what I made last week. I set a firm intention. I set a firm intention. To make twice what I made last week this week. To make twice what I made last week this week. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Excellent. Very good. So even though I made what I made last week. So even though I made what I made last week. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. To make twice what I made last week this week. To make twice what I made last week this week. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Excellent. So even though I made what I made last week. So even though I made what I made last week. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. To make twice what I made last week this week. To make twice what I made last week this week. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And I deeply, and I deeply love, 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 Excellent. Very good. Let's go top of the head. I choose to make twice what I made last week this week. I choose to make twice what I made last week this week. Okay, eyebrow. I deserve to make twice what I made last week this week. I deserve to make twice what I made last week this week. Side of the eye. I give myself permission to make twice what I made last week this week. I give, I give myself permission to make twice what I made last week this week. Okay, under the eye. I am willing to make twice what I made last week this week. I am willing to make twice what I made last week this week. Under the nose, it's safe for me to make twice what I made last week this week. It's safe for me to make twice what I made last week this week. Under the mouth, I have the power to make twice what I made last week this week. I have the power to make twice what I made last week this week. Okay, Colin, I like the way it feels when I make twice what I made last week this week. I like what it feels when I make twice what I made last week this week. Okay, under the arm. It's easy for me to make twice what I made last week this week. It's easy for me to make twice what I made last week this week. Okay, karate chop. So even though I made what I made last week... So even though I made what I made last week. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, Today right, right now, now, I set a firm intention. To make twice what I made last week this week. To make, make twice what I made last, last week, week this week. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And, and I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Excellent. Take a deep breath. And I'll release. Awesome. Very cool. Excellent. And again, the trick with all this stuff is to do it frequently because what we're doing is we're reprogramming ourselves. We're brainwashing ourselves. A, <coughs> a level of abundance is a habit. And the way we affect change is by replacing one habit with a new habit. So if we're under earning or we wish to change the level of abundance, which is a habit, we need to replace it with a new habit of making more money. And we start off by reprogramming ourselves. And of course, EFT is an incredibly powerful tool for reprogramming the old uh, noggin here, okay? Uh, also, and this is very important. The reason you, other reason you have your little two dollar spiral notebook, is you're going to start developing money consciousness or money awareness, which means keep, keeping a record of your income and your expenses. Now, some people do this on paper. Some people do it on a com computer or a PDA. Some people do it in software. Whichever way floats your boat. Okay. 
but what you're trying to do is to develop an awareness of your financial environment. Most people, unfortunately, live in a state of what I call terminal vagueness when it comes to their money. You know, they sort of know how much money they have in the bank. They sort of know how much money they're earning. Well, again, my, my answer to that is you should be aware of your financial environment the same way you know your phone number and your street address. You know, uh, let's face it. I mean, you'd, you'd, if somebody asked you, well, what's your, home, what's your home address and you couldn't answer, you'd, you'd feel or look pretty silly. Well, in a kind of, you know, in a way that's you need to know about your financial uh, situation, your financial environment the same way. Now, the interesting thing, when you read memoirs of exceptional or uh, special people or famous people, they all share one thing in common. They were all aware and, uh, you know, and in touch with their financial environment. If you look up Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Harriet Tubman, I mean Marie Curie, they, if you look at their memoirs, okay, their unedited memoirs, because usually the publishers of their memoirs usually edit out the financial stuff, okay? But if you look at their raw memoirs, you know, right next to discovered radium, okay, uh, went out and bought a chicken, you know, five francs, okay? Uh, or Louis Pasteur discovered, you know, penicillin, uh, you know, uh, took a ride to the took a ride to uh, you know Montmartre. Uh, you know, bought a painting from Manet. You know, I mean, I'm serious. You know, a hundred francs. I'm serious. They 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 documented every penny they spent and every penny they earned. If you look at Benjamin, you know, discovered electricity. Uh, you know, earned a hundred dollars uh, printing a newspaper, or you know, wrote the Declaration of Independence and then you know bought a chicken for a dollar. You know, I'm serious. I mean, these. I mean that they were at. It was just. It was. They were as aware of their financial environment as they were of every other aspect of their lives. You know, and this is an important part of manifesting success and abundance okay doesn't mean you become a money grubber or money obsessed okay but it means money conscious you know yeah okay so moving along it's now the uh like i said check-in time where you guys are welcome to check in ask questions uh you know if there's any particular uh trials and tribulations uh, also, if there are any goals or stuff you want to share, this is the time. As I say, this is the time to kvetch or kvell. In other words, if you if you want to brag about some a recent success, go ahead. If you kind of want to bitch and moan, that's okay also. Also, if there's something specific about law of attraction, abundance, success, etc., that you want to talk about or uh, develop an EFT tap about uh, now's the time so go ahead please who'd hey, like to check in go ahead I got a question I like every now and then I like to take a walk to like Publix and stuff right and give me a scratch off of the two not so I could win a gazillion dollars on it it's just my little form of having fun small little way just for me to blow off some steam let me just get a two dollar scratch off or you know two or three one dollar scratch off What's a good EFT tap for that? Well, all I know, well, just an abundance tap. <laughs> yeah, abundance tap. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. I had a face-to-face -face law of attraction workshop in a town called New Paltz a few years back, which is a few miles away from where I, well, it's about 30, I don't know whatever it is. But anyway, uh, and uh, we had a break. You know, it was actually a two-hour workshop. And at you know we break in the middle for coffee and you know kitty litter you know pit stop, and one of the girls ran out to the deli to get a cup of coffee that was right next door, and she she won a hundred dollars. <laughs> I have no opinions on that. I mean, frankly, <clears throat> whatever floats your boat. If it works for you, fine. I would just avoid uh, you know a shall we say obsessive or compulsive gambling and as long oh, as it's no. yeah. as long as it's entertainment and you can afford it and it doesn't you know definitely fun i'm talking about like two or three bucks a week right well okay well i mean <laughs> i do listen fun of it, you know? i do have a story about a friend of mine and this was way 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 this is 
easily 30, 40 years ago. Uh, and he had religiously every payday he bought a five dollar something or other, you know, whatever it was. Yeah. And then he finally won, you know, a million dollars for life, you know. Well, here's what he he said that he had probably spent over ten years every Friday, you know. <laughs> But it still worked out, you know, he said, you know, he added it up and he said, well, it was still several thousands of dollars over so many years. But he, but the, of course, with the way they paid him, they didn't give him a million dollars at once. They gave him $30,000 a year for life. Very cool. Which is nice, but you know what I mean? That's how they stretch it out so they don't end up, you know, stiff. No, 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 I get it. Yeah. You don't so, get the check. You don't get a million bucks. You you get like thirty thousand bucks a year for life, which I you know, or fifty or forty, whatever the magic. Dude, I get I get happy when I win two bucks. I there you happy. go. Well, I mean, just do an abundance tap or a, you know or whatever, or just a gratitude tap. I mean, you know, you could invent your own tap. You know, winning the lotto tap. Ah, you know. Okay. Anybody else have any uh, questions? Kvetch or Kvel, challenges, victories? Go ahead, please. Anybody? Um, I would say um, that um, I have a challenge. Um, I've invited someone to share my office with me, um, partially because um, it's budget wise it's getting a little bit much for me um but also because this he, and he's quite young and he's well i actually he's he's a talented um uh he knows how to do web development which is a perfect complement to my skills as graphic designer and um so he has uh moved in and he's kind of set up his workspace and stuff and um but i'm not i don't really have any jobs right now you know i'm hoping to get a job that we can work together but um yeah so i'm i'm just like i don't know he's only committed month to month you know so he's committed for one month and i'm i'm not really sure like I guess I need some, uh, you know, courage to like have a sit down talk with him, maybe ask him what his, yeah, maybe I need to ask him what his expectations are. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like an interesting situation. What I always tell people, and this is my default, any arrangement I have with anybody that involves some kind of commitment on my part that involves my resources or my funds um, or impossible future income in writing. Okay. And also before I negotiate with somebody, I kind of write down and I, I just take a piece of paper and write down pros and cons and what are my needs and what are my expectation or what do I want out of the relationship okay and I actually write it down I do the math I do the numbers okay so to see if that you know a if it adds up financially if there really is a financial or business reason for doing it if there is a you know if it's a plus or a minus you know you just work it out basic arithmetic um, but also whatever I do eventually uh, whatever the arrangement is, I do, uh, it's, it's in writing. Okay. Uh, cause again, you know, you're, you, you know, you don't, you, you know, <laughs> things happen. People change. You know what I'm saying? People change. Stuff happens. Uh, you know, and again, even though, you know, you may trust this guy or like this guy or whatever, uh, the the deal is that you know uh, you want to make sure that whatever rules and table manners that are important to you, you know, are respected by him, and vice versa. You know, and also if there's some kind of financial arrangement, you want to make sure that that's documented and enforceable, and that you don't get into the sort of he said she said kind of situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's my advice to you. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And, you know, the whole point about I, I always recommend joint ventures with people. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing joint ventures. My joint ventures are always very temporary. Yeah. 
yeah. I only do it for a an event or a specific uh, uh, short period of time. In other words, I'm I don't I don't get married. <laughs> I just do dates. <laughs> well, I guess you know. That's I, me. That's me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not ready to you know make a full partnership or anything like that. I mean, it's really. I well, mean, well, you, you know, could you could be a landlord tenant type thing. We well, we're more kind of exploring, you know, and that's kind of what he suggested. Like, well, let's kind of try it out. <laughs> keep keep good it. boundaries and keep your stuff separate from his. Yeah, trial period. But I'd keep good boundaries and keep my, you know, keep your yeah. money stuff separate. Keep oh, yeah, yeah. keep all your financial stuff confidential. Make sure he doesn't have access to any of your private or. Oh no 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 no! I mean, the thing is, is that there's two different levels of things going on. There's, you know, I'm renting him space. Like he's he's an office mate. You know, he's a tenant. But on that level, he said he just he only wanted to commit for one month. <laughs> so that's a little odd, you know. But I just figured, okay. He's young and he doesn't really know what he's doing. Um, so I guess I have to come up with some sort of system of like, okay, it's he's paid for January. At what what date do I find out whether he's staying? In well, if it's only one month, just remember that uh, again with commercial rent, and this is something. You know, at least you you should be mindful, and I would at least spend five minutes with an attorney. Uh, and again, landlord tenant laws vary from county to county. Uh, there are some state laws, but they they do vary from county to county. And the problem with landlord tenant is once somebody's in, it's really hard to get them out. Oh no, it it wouldn't be the case because okay. Okay. I have the lease in mind. I'm I'm just talking physically, you, you know, unless you know, let's put it this way. And I'm just giving you the worst case scenario. So he yeah. turns out to be Ted Bundy's evil nep nephew, okay? And you want him out or he can't pay the rent or he's a complete slacker and a waste of time, okay? Uh and you say I need you out by the end of the month and he doesn't leave. Okay? Guess what? It's going to cost you a lot of money to get him out legally, and you just unless he's physically threatening you, the police are not going to help you. Okay, just be mindful of that. All right, I'm not saying that this is anything wrong with this guy, but that's one of the problems when you let somebody into your premises, and it's even harder with commercial kind of deals. Okay, I mean I'm just giving you some good advice because my ex-wife lost a fortune okay with a professional screwball scumbag tenant took her two years to get rid of this guy okay. all right and uh so trust me you know and there i'm not saying this guy is that but you need to at least have that have that protection or kind of stuff in your back pocket or be aware of what the risks are and that's why you need something in writing. Okay. I would strongly recommend, and even a lease of some kind with him in writing, that protects your rights. That's why you know, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay. I would definitely go. You know, there's you know, there's lots of attorneys, and again, a, a landlord tenant or some kind of commercial subtenancy or something agreement is not an expensive document to pay for. But if you have, you know, again, like I said, this guy might be a total angel and God's gift to you and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what if he isn't? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're basically it's check-in time. Uh, 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 let's see here. I got Karen showed up. Hi, Karen. How are you? Good. How you doing? Okay, it's now check-in time where people are invited to check in. Kvetch or Kvel? Either uh, Kvel and brag about victories and successes or Kvetch about problems. Also, ask about anything that you want to tap on 
uh, or any kind of questions and answers about EFT or Law of Attraction. So, anybody else want to uh, check in? Hey, can I? Sure, of course, Billy. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I already spoke with you, you know, about losing two clients this week that were major clients. Right. And it's a hard hit. And, you know, we went over a lot. It's just, hey, I could use some reinforcement because, you know, it's still freaking me out having to work psychic lines and making nothing. Right, I hear you. Well, I'm just going to, you know, we'll do maybe we'll do some tapping as well. Uh, I just want to recommend a couple of books to everybody. I have no financial interest in this, but it is a, a couple of books that are an excellent resource. I was looking around in my copy of uh, The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. I couldn't find it downstairs. I've had it for almost 20 odd years. But definitely, if you're any kind of an artist or creative, all right, you want to use the uh, get a hold of the artist way. You can probably pick it up for like two bucks secondhand or remainder copy. All right, uh, great for anybody who's some any kind of uh, practitioner or creative. It's a great book. It's a great process. Um, it, it really works well with the. Uh, there you go. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. Excellent. Da da, very yeah, good. I, I did get it. I got a used copy online for a couple of bucks. Right, the postage costs more than the book. Yeah. And it's got a lot of material on, and there's some really tappable stuff. And I did run some EFT Law of Attraction groups with the Artist Way uh, several times over the last 20 years. It really works very well. And you do need to do some tapping sometimes because one of the problems with the Artist Way is uh, as you get into it, it really challenges and frightens a lot of people, and that's why they give up. And that's when you need to start tapping, because it really gets at the nitty gritty uh, of whatever is blocking you, or upsetting you, or getting in your way, or you know, etc. So definitely EFT will help you with the artist way. Another book that I strongly recommend for anybody who's self-employed or has a practice. This one, uh, this is more about debting if you're in debt. But it's written by a guy called Gerald Mundus. But the one that I really think is good for people on tonight is this one, Earn What You Deserve by Gerald Mundus. He wrote these two books back in the 80s, okay, a million years ago. And again, these are two hardcover books, but you can get the hardcover or the paperback for, like I said, less than the postage. And these are brand new copies. These are brand new. These were remainder copies. All right. So, uh, frankly, it's a great deal. Uh, and again, I, I recommend, I would try to recommend cheap or free or easy resources. Another resource, again, a free resource is a website called underearnersanonymous.org. Now, it's a 12 step fellowship. Uh, they, but they have some excellent tools and resources, files that you can download. All kinds of material that are very good for running your own business, running your own practice. They also have uh, ten, uh, at least ten telephone conference workshops a day on different topics. However, I do always say one caveat with lay self-help groups. Uh, they're unmoderated, and they're only as good as the people that are in them. And you can be in one group, uh, one of these conferences, and it's you know, absolutely brilliant and fantastic. And then you go into the next one, uh, and the next thing you know, it's one flew over the cuckoo's nest, and it's crazy hours. So, again, I say caveat emptor, but they definitely they've got some excellent material, and you can't beat the price. It's for free. Okay, so uh, anybody else want to check in, uh, something you want to tap on? Uh Anybody want to kvetch or kvell? Go ahead, please. Any questions? Go ahead. Okay, let me see. All right, so, uh, Billy, since you were talking about being in a lot of uh, pain or fear or anxiety about having lost a customer or two customers, right? Now, you don't mind my uh, asking. These were customers that, frankly, had uh, displayed bad behavior. Is that correct? One had. The other had not. Okay. Well, again, uh, you know, the whole thing about business and customers, 
uh, and this was taught to me many, many years ago, you're going to lose at least 20% of your business every year just due to attrition. Now, attrition just means the weather, all right? Uh, customers, business comes and goes, and you have to plan on losing 20% of your business. All right, and it's with no fault of your own, just happenstance, life. Uh, if you can hold on to, you know, all your customers, then you're beating the numbers, okay? But most businesses bank on losing 20% of their business. People go out of business, people move, people get pissed off, people go crazy, you know what I mean? People go broke, uh, people pass away. So, you have to figure you're going to lose 20% 20, 20 of your business anyway, which means you have to really pump up that marketing funnel to, to replace that 20% that's going to dissolve anyway, you know. It would be nice, you know, in a perfect world, uh, you know, <laughs> we'd have permanent customers who would be with us for life and whoop de doo Unfortunately, uh, in my business, listen, my clients leave me because they get better. What can I say? My clients leave me because, uh, you know, they get successful. They start making money. They say, thank you, Tony. Goodbye. You know, <laughs> hey, I did a good I job. Have, I have a question here. Yeah. How do you pump up the marketing funnel? Well, again, that's, you know, again, I can't give you technical advice, all right? Uh, I can only give you generalized advice. And, again, you, you know, there's – there. okay, I'm going to tell you. The best resource that I have on how to do stuff is YouTube, all right? And what you go is you go to YouTube in the YouTube search box and type in the two magic words, how to, and whatever your problem is. How to get more customers in, yada, yada. How to replace lost customers. How to expand my business. You will normally find at least five to ten to 10,000 little homemade YouTubes of different people sharing what they did. Uh, YouTube is my best resource on how to do anything, whether it's fixing a car. Uh, I was actually replacing a washer in my kitchen sink. Okay, and I typed into YouTube how to replace rubber washer kitchen sink, and there were 50 YouTubes on how to do that. Okay, so I've done that with practically everything that I need to know, and it's, you can't beat the price, it's for free. All right, uh, so that would be my first thing, and then of course, Google how to replace lost customers, how to expand. As a rule of thumb, Okay, if a client or a customer crosses a boundary with me, okay, if they're rude or abusive or they don't pay their bills, I fire them. Okay, because <coughs> let's face it, an abusive customer or a customer that doesn't pay their bills is actually worse than no customer. Now that's my opinion, and uh, you know, and unfortunately, when we're if we're in a if we're in a condition of under earning, uh, I think somebody's okay. There we go. Uh, if we're in a condition of under earning or deprivation, that sounds or feels very scary. Okay, but frankly, the stress that an abusive customer or a customer doesn't pay, which is frankly being abusive, okay? That's like being in an abusive relationship. You know, it is an abusive relationship. It's like being in an abusive marriage or something, you know? And it's just not worth the money because it, it you know, it's, it's keeping you from somebody better and healthier who really does respect you and wants to, uh, you know, reward you financially and respects the advice and the help that you're giving them, okay? So that's just my opinion. Uh, I have zero tolerance for abuse, okay? And I've had clients, you know, rage at me, have temper tantrums and hissy fit. I just say, excuse me, uh, you know, this is uh, behavior is unacceptable. I'm terminating the session, okay? And if they don't apologize, I don't accept their business afterwards, okay? Because if somebody doesn't apologize for their bad behavior, that means they're going to do it again, you know? If they don't show remorse for bad behavior. So I don't reward bad behavior. 
Now, now that's my opinion, opinion, okay? <laughs> but I'm sorry it happened to you, but what we can tap on is the pain and the hurt that they caused you, right? Because that's that's the, the emotional uh that's the emotional hangover that you're suffering from, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so let's work on that because that's really this happened to me once. I was working I actually was working with a guy. I'll tell you the story. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, it's a de demonstration of my recovery, but it's also demonstrating that I'm also quite vulnerable as well. I'm not bulletproof. There was, a, I was doing business with a guy who ripped me off, okay? Uh, but it took me only 24 hours to respond to him. But he behaved just like my crazy, psychotic, alcoholic, drug addict father. So during this whole period, I was having all these nightmares and flashbacks, even though I stood up for myself, I demanded my money, I collected my money, okay? All right? I did all the right things, but I still had the emotional hangover, which is a perfect thing for EFT, okay? So, you know, there are people who will push my buttons or push our buttons. There are people who are ill-intentioned who will try to hurt us or rip us off or abuse us the name of the game is get out of the way disconnect detach try to heal yourself take care of yourself and then move on to somebody better okay but uh, when we're in that pain I was having physical symptoms I was having fibromyalgia and for three days afterwards okay I had nightmares about my father would you believe now I was tapping I got my money I took care of business you know but I still am emotionally vulnerable because I'm not Superman okay however with the FT within three nights over done you know what I mean all right so let's uh, let's connect with the feelings uh, Billy okay what is the feeling that you felt? Was it shame or hurt or fear? What was what was what was being triggered? Well, the first one was shock. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I really mean mean that shock. The the one that was a bad client was just pissed off basically. Okay, well, let's do one at a time. Let's separate our problems, okay? That's how you eat an elephant, one problem at a time, okay? Because <laughs> the one that's shock is the one that probably had the longest toxic effect, okay? So let's, again, rubbing your sore spot or tapping on your karate chop, okay? Even though I was so hurt by, do you want to use a person's first name or initial? Sure. Even though I was so hurt by Debbie. Debbie, and I was really shocked. And I was really shocked. By the way, she was so abusive to me. By the way, she was so abusive to me. It really hurt. It really hurt. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. And did you feel it in your body? Were there any body feelings when you connected with the feelings? Well, I just want to cry, even now. Okay, good. And I just want to cry. And I just want to cry. And I deeply and completely. And I deeply and completely. Everybody, let's share benefits. Okay. So even though I was so hurt by Debbie. Even though I was so hurt by Debbie. She was so abusive. She was so abusive. And I was so shocked. And I was so shocked. And it made me want to cry. And it made me want to cry. I even want to cry right now. I even want to cry right now. But I deeply and completely. But I deeply and completely. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Okay. Now, a couple of things you want to connect with, if you can. Again, this is, uh, you know, is on a scale of zero to ten, uh, this uh, wanting to cry or being hurt or shock, on a scale of 0 to 10, what would be the number? Again, you don't have to be, you know, micrometer perfect here, but just an uh, intuitive number. Yeah, would 10 being the worst, I would take it? Yeah, 10 is the worst. 0, you're the Dalai Lama. 10, you're screaming or you're crying. Uh, I'd go with a 9. Okay. All right, so even though uh, Debbie really hurt me, 
even though Debbie really hurt. She, she was so abusive. She was so abusive. And it really hurt. And it really hurt. And, it really hurt. and I feel this pain. And I feel this pain. I want to cry. I want to cry. I want to cry. And my number is? And my number is? Nine, right? Say your number. Nine. Okay. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Now, one more thing we're going to do, and I just, again, this not always happens, but is there anywhere in when you say that, is, do you feel anything in any specific part of your body, like your throat, your chest, your tummy, or do you have any body feelings? doesn't always happen. Yeah, I do. Where? I'm trying to. I would say the heart. Okay, so even though I feel all this hurt and pain in my heart, even though I feel all this hurt and pain in my heart, and it hurts so much I want to cry, it hurts so much I want to cry. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. All hurt and pain in my heart. All hurt and pain in my heart. And I deeply and completely. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Okay, now let's go start tapping the top of the head. All hurt and pain in my heart. All hurt and pain in my heart. Eyebrow, all this Debbie hurt and pain in my heart. Debbie hurt and pain in my heart. I really want to cry. I really want to cry. Side of the eye. I was so shocked by Debbie. I was so shocked by Debbie. She was so mean and abusive. She was so mean and abusive. It really hurt me. It really hurt. Me. And I felt it in my heart. And I felt it in my heart. Okay, under the eye, on the cheekbone, all hurt and pain in my heart. All hurt and pain in my heart. Debbie was so abusive. Debbie was so abusive. It's not fair. There. Under the nose. I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry. All hurt and pain in my heart. All hurt and pain in my heart. It's not fair. It's not fair. I was trying to help her. I was trying to I was trying to help her. Under the mouth. All hurt and pain in my heart. All hurt and pain in my heart. It's not fair. It's not fair. She was so mean to me. She was so and I'm trying to help her. And I'm trying to help her. And it really hurt my heart. And it really hurt my heart. Collarbone. I want to cry. I want to cry. Mean Debbie. Mean Debbie. She really hurt me. She really hurt me. She really hurt me. She was so mean and nasty. So mean. She was so mean and nasty. It's not fair. Not fair. I'm all pain and hurt in my heart. All this pain and hurt in my heart. She was so mean to me. She was so mean. And I didn't deserve it one bit. And I didn't deserve it one bit. I was trying to help her. I was trying to help her. Karate chop. So even though I've got all this hurt and pain in my heart. Even though I have all this hurt and pain in my heart. Mean Debbie. Mean Debbie. Uh, today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. To heal and let go. To heal and let go. All hurt and pain in my heart. All hurt and pain in my heart. And I deeply and completely. And I deeply and completely. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Very good. Top of the head. Letting go of all hurt and pain in my heart. Letting go of all hurt and pain in my heart. Letting go of mean Debbie. Letting go of mean Debbie. Eyebrow, letting go. Letting go. Side of the eye, letting go. Letting go. Under the eye, letting go. Letting go. Under the nose, letting go. Letting go. Under the mouth, letting go. Letting go. Collarbone, letting go. Letting go. Under the arm, letting go. Letting go. Karate chop. Letting go of mean Debbie and all hurt and pain in my heart. Letting go of mean Debbie and all hurt and pain in my heart. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. 
know, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Beautiful. Take a deep breath. breath. And now release. Okay, how are we feeling? Very good. Thank you. I would, listen, you know, <laughs> sometimes you may have to do it again or it may come back, but if you do it two or three times, this will get, because, you know, then it'll, it'll go down to about a zero, okay? When it goes down to a zero, that's the whole point. When we carry that kind of hurt and pain, it actually makes us distance ourselves from business. You know, we don't want to go back into the into the trenches if we've been hurt you know what I'm saying and we start to avoid you know and of course with business it's like riding a horse if you fall off you, you got to get back on because you need to you know but the tapping will help you to get over you know a difficult moment or an abusive client or abusive boss also Ho'oponopono and the protective shield of golden light I always regardless <laughs> I always do protective shield of golden light before I work with a client. Always. Now, you don't have to do protective shield of golden light. Maybe you do something else. But I always do some kind of clearing and protection before I see a client. That's just me. That's just, shall we say, psychic hygiene or spiritual hygiene. You know what I mean? Well, it is. I usually do what you're saying normally. Okay, and it, you know, like I said, just do the tapping. It will pass, but it is that fear and that hurt and that shock, and you want to tap on all those. And if you're connecting with the body feeling, you just say, in my heart or in my stomach or in my chest, wherever you feel it, you tap on that way. Okay, but that was a great, listen, that stuff happens in business. We get crazy clients. We get crazy, abusive, difficult, impossible clients, and the name of the game is zero tolerance. Give them a refund and dump them. That's what I do. If I get a crazy on, if I get somebody who's really, I would call a troll or a basher, I immediately terminate the session. I just say, listen, it's not working. I'm going to give you a refund. Goodbye. Don't call me. Boom. Click. And I never do business with them again. Sure. You know, I don't reward bad behavior. You know, and. I agree. You know, and there's plenty of good business out there. And the way I look at it, if I'm wasting my time with somebody who doesn't respect what I'm doing, doesn't respect my, my art or my craft or my profession, and is just looking for a victim, you know, they're keeping me away from somebody who does respect what I do, who really needs what I have to offer, and who will benefit from what I have to offer. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think you're right. Yeah. So I'm sorry you went through what you went through, but just keep tapping. You will pass that feeling of being slimed and kind of dirty and hurt and creepy and being abused. That's what abuse feels like, you know. Uh, you know, that's, that's abuse. That's called abuse, you know. And it does hurt. And like I said, even though I've been doing this kind of work for a gazillion years, when that creepo tried to stiff me, I, ha I had that emotional hangover for three days, and I was tapping like a maniac, you know. But, you know. We're not bulletproof. We're not bulletproof. What can I say, you know? Okay, anybody else want to check in? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Billy. That was a great opportunity for tapping. But that's that's why we have EFT. It's a great tool. Anybody else want to check in? Uh, again, uh, also, uh, <coughs> we're going to do our uh, vision tap. So anybody have any goals or short-term goals or long-term goals? This can be... Uh, anything from a new practice or a new business or a new client or maybe uh, subletting a space, any particular goal that you might have or vision, all right? Uh, again, where to go? Where to go? Oh, where is it? It fell down. Write it down. Write it down. And again, devote a whole page to that vision. Okay, start with the, you know, a date, uh, completion date, date you're starting, date you're completing. Uh, uh, names of people that are involved, the actions, you know, because most goals are several actions. They're not just one action. They're several actions, okay? Uh, the people that you're involved with. Also, dollars and cents, if there's some kind of money goal, how much you want to make or spend or et cetera or what your budget is or whatever, 
okay? And then most importantly, which is, you know, I, I find it most important, is whatever spiritual, moral, or ethical values you wish to honor while uh, manifesting or completing or achieving the goal, okay? And that becomes your script, your mind movie script, your imago script, uh, your creative vision script. I mean, again, there's a lot of different names for the same thing. Uh, of course, at those $3,000 weekend seminars at the Marriott, they give you a little uh, kitty scissors and a little pot of kitty paste, and they give you some old magazines, and, you know, you cut up the magazines, and you stick them all up on a piece of cardboard, and that becomes like your vision board, which is cool. Uh, I just rather have it in a notebook, because what I like to do is, uh, say I set a goal, uh, just for argument's sake, today, I like to go back, say, a month from now and see what my progress is with that goal or that vision. And, you know, very often I'll look and say, oh, my gosh, I've really, I've achieved that goal. And that builds self-confidence and self-esteem and, uh, you know, it, it, it feels, you feel empowered and validated and, and excited. It really energizes you. So that's why I suggest write them down, date them, put as much details and add to the details, okay? Add to that uh, mind movie, all right? So uh, whatever your goal is or mind movie is today, unless if you want to share them, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. Anybody have a mind movie they want to share or declare? If you want to, you're welcome. Uh, otherwise, we'll just do it uh, silently. Uh, again, I strongly recommend you write it down. But right now, let's just take it out for a test drive. I want you all to close your eyes. Okay, just close your eyes and connect with whatever goal you may have, whatever mind movie you may have, all right? Uh, again, uh, from what, you know, uh, whether it's new clients, uh, a new joint venture with a new partner or a new tenant, okay, getting a new business off the ground or a new practice or a new aspect of your practice off the ground, okay, and just run that movie in your mind's eye, okay? Run that movie in your mind's eye, whether it's, again, increasing your income, whatever it is, run that movie in your mind's eye while you're rubbing your sore spot or tapping on your karate chop, okay? And when you're done, okay, when you're done, when the movies come to the end, you know, uh, the, the Disney finish, okay, just say ready so I know it's time for us all to tap together, okay? Okay. Ready. Okay, excellent, very good, awesome. All right, so now let's just, again, tapping on your karate chop or rubbing on your sore spot, just repeat after me. Even, uh, even though I have my Success in Abundance uh, movie. Even though I have my Success in Abundance movie. I choose to allow the universe. I choose to allow the universe. To manifest Success in Abundance in my life. To manifest success and abundance in my life. In the best possible way and for the greatest good. In the best possible way and for the greatest good. And I align myself with the universe so this can come to pass. And I align myself with the universe so this can come to pass. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. I deeply and completely love and forgive myself and accept myself. Excellent. Very good. So even though I have my uh, Success in Abundance movie, even though, even though I have my Success in Abundance movie, I choose to allow the universe, I choose to allow the universe to manifest Success in Abundance in my life, to manifest Success in Abundance in my life, in the best possible way and for the greatest good, in the best possible way and for the greatest good. And I align myself with the universe so this can come to pass. And I align myself with the universe so this can come to pass. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Excellent. So one more time. So even though I have my Success in Abundance movie, even though I have my success in abundance movie. <laughs> Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. To allow the universe to manifest success in abundance in my life. Sorry, go ahead. To allow success and abundance in my life. Okay, in the best possible way and for the greatest good. In 
the best possible way and for the greatest good. And I align myself with the universe so this can come to pass. And I align myself with the universe so this can come to pass. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Excellent. Very good. So now we're going to do top of the head. Okay, top of the head. I choose to allow the universe. I choose to allow the universe. To manifest success and abundance in my life. To manifest success and abundance in my life. I deserve to allow the universe. I deserve to allow the universe to manifest success and abundance in my life. To manifest success and abundance in my life. So I, I, it, I give myself permission to allow the universe. I give myself permission to allow the universe to manifest success and abundance in my life. To manifest success and abundance in my life. Under the, I am willing to allow the universe. I am willing to allow the universe to manifest success and abundance in my life. Manifest success and abundance in my life. Under the nose, it's safe for me to allow the universe. It's safe for me to allow the universe to manifest success and abundance in my life. Manifest success and abundance in my life. Under the mouth, I have the power to allow the universe. I have the power to allow the universe to manifest success and abundance in my life. To manifest success. In abundance in my life. Collarbone. I like the way it feels when I allow the universe. I like the way it feels when I allow the universe to manifest success and abundance in my life. Manifest success and abundance in my life. Under the arm. It's easy for me to allow the universe. It's easy for me to allow the universe to manifest success and abundance in my life. To manifest in abundance in my life. Karate chop. So even though I have my success in abundance movie. Even though I have my success in abundance movie. Today right now I set a firm intention. Today right now I set a firm intention. To allow the universe. To allow the universe. To manifest success in abundance in my life. To manifest success in abundance in my life. In the best possible way and for the greatest good. In the best possible way way for the greatest good. And I align myself with the universe so this can come to pass. I align myself in the universe for this to come to pass. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And I deeply and completely love, forgive, and accept myself. Excellent. Very good. So I'll take a deep breath and I'll release. There we go. There you go. Excellent. Okay, and again, the secret behind the secret is frequency, repetition, and specificity. Uh, people would used to go to my teacher, Gary Craig, and go, Gary, Gary, what's the secret? You know, what's the inside track? And Gary would say, frequency, repetition, specificity. You know, and again, people go, oh, that's so boring and tedious, you know. Well, guess what? Under earning, uh, being under financial pressure, not taking care of your needs, that's boring and tedious, too. You know, uh, I think I'd rather have the other. Uh, I'd rather be b uh, happy and abundant and prosperous than boring and tedious. But anyway, moving along again, uh, we're going to do the abundance tap uh, again, which is uh, wrapping up our session. I think we've had an excellent workshop tonight. And uh, what we're going to do again, rubbing your sore spot or tapping on your karate chop. OK, and. Uh, whichever you prefer, and just repeat after me, even though I have been allowing the universe, even though I have been allowing the universe to manifest some abundance in my life, allowing to manifest some abundance in my life, I choose to allow the universe, I choose to allow the universe to manifest even more abundance in my life, to manifest even more abundance in my life, and I deeply and completely and I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Excellent. So even though I have been allowing the universe, even though I have been allowing the universe to manifest some abundance in my life, to manifest some abundance in my life, I set a firm intention. I set a firm intention to allow the universe to allow the universe to manifest even more abundance in my life. Manifest even more abundance in my life. And I deeply and completely. And I deeply and completely. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, 
have accepted to give myself. Excellent. So even though I have been allowing the universe, even though I have been allowing the universe to manifest some abundance in my life, to manifest some abundance in my life. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, right now, I set a firm intention to allow the universe. To allow the universe to manifest even more abundance in my life. To allow the universe to manifest even more abundance in my life. And I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. And I deeply and completely I love, love and accept myself. Very good. Excellent. There's no way there's no way to mess this up. Any way you do it is fine. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's do a karate chop. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Today, right now, I set a firm intention. Top of the head. To allow the universe. To allow the universe. To manifest even more abundance in my life. To allow the universe to more abundance into my life. Eyebrow. Even more abundance of love. Even more abundance of love. Side of the eye. Even more abundance of happiness. Even more abundance of happiness. On the eye, even more abundance of good health. Even more abundance of good health. On the eye, even more abundance of uh, financial prosperity. Even more abundance of financial prosperity. On the eye, even more abundance of artistic creativity. Even more abundance of artistic creativity. Collarbone, even more abundance of good friends. Even more abundance of good friends. I'm even more abundance of all the good things I really need. Or even more abundance of all the good things I need. Very good. Karate chop. So today, right now, I set a firm intention. So today, right now, I set a firm intention. Very good. Top of the head. To allow the universe. To allow the universe. To manifest even more abundance in my life. Manifest even more abundance in my life. Eyebrow, even more abundance of love. Even more abundance of love. Side of the eye, even more abundance of happiness. Even more abundance of happiness. And even more abundance of good health. More abundance of good health. Oh no, even more abundance of financial prosperity. More abundance of financial prosperity. Oh no, even more abundance of artistic creativity. More abundance of artistic creativity. Call on even more abundance of good friends. More abundance of good friends. Honey, I'm even more abundance of all the good things I really need. More abundance of all the good things I really need. Karate chop. And I deeply and completely. And I deeply and completely. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Love, accept, and forgive myself. Excellent. Very good. So I'll take a deep breath. And I'll release. Okay. Very cool. Excellent. Well, guys, I want to thank you for being on tonight. Thank you, uh, Billy and Karen and Sarah and Raph. Who, anyway, uh, we'll be on uh, just a little couple of announcements. Uh, as you know, we have our breakfast club tune-up every morning at 9 a.m., Monday through Saturday, where we just burn through the EFT taps, okay? Also, tomorrow night, I've got a psychic workshop. Uh, we've got a uh, broadcast with Barry Pirro, the Connecticut Ghost Hunter. Whoa! And he'll be on tomorrow night at 9 p.m., so that should be fun. He's an old buddy of mine, and everybody loves him. Uh, you know, and there's always a crowd, so it should be kind of fun. And he'll tell scary stories. Ah! So that's cool. Also, if anybody needs a little coaching or helpful, I am available. <laughs> I have special offers, and I also am probably one of the cheapest guys on the Internet, so don't be afraid to ask me for help. I do give a lot of help. Anyway, guys, I love you all. I wish you all a happy, prosperous, abundant, love-filled week. Mwah, 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 huggy face, kissy poos. And, and God bless you, my dear. Thank you. Good night, guys. I love you all. Ciao. Good night. Good night. Good night.